Welcome to lesson four on our series on crude oil. Today we're going to be looking at combustion of fuels. But before you move on to this content, make sure you've watched videos one to three and practiced. To begin with, we're going to be looking at a recap on the content from last week. So please read these questions, pause the video, and then come back to check your answers. The two types of cracking are catalytic cracking and steam cracking. Next up, we had to complete this paragraph. Cracking is used to break the bonds in long chain hydrocarbons in order to make short chain hydrocarbons. Short chain hydrocarbons are in greater demand because they make better fuels due to their high flammability and low viscosity. Of course, we want a fuel to be flammable and we don't want it to be too thick, otherwise it would block up the pipes of an engine. Both types of cracking use high temperatures in order to break the bonds in long chain hydrocarbons. Therefore, cracking is a type of thermal decomposition. Cracking produces a mixture of short chain alkenes and alkanes. The features a hydrocarbon must have in order to be classified as an alkene are it must contain a singular CC double bond, so one of those CC double bonds somewhere in the structure, and it must abide by the general formula of CNH2N, meaning that the number of hydrogens is double the number of carbons, and that's it. What's the test for alkenes and its result? We need to add bromine water to an alkene and shake it. If that bromine water changes from orange to colourless, then an alkene has been detected. Whereas, if it remains orange, we haven't got an alkene. Let's have a look at what we're going to look at in today's lesson. First of all, we're going to study what combustion is. Then we're going to look at the different types of combustion and when they occur. We're then going to look at the reactants and products of each type of combustion. We're going to look at oxidation in terms of the gain of oxygen in context to combustion. We're then going to look at how you can balance any combustion equation and write them from scratch. Then we're going to look at testing for a particular product of combustion, carbon dioxide. And then we're going to finish up by looking at the issues caused by the products of each type of combustion. To begin with, you should be familiar with combustion already. Combustion is often known as burning, and it's a type of chemical reaction that will occur when a fuel burns in oxygen. The hydrocarbons that we've looked at in the examples of crude oil are a great example of fuels because they contain carbon and hydrogen, which oxidise readily. Combustion is a key example of an exothermic reaction because it releases heat energy. You'll know this from putting your hands above anything burning. It's warm. That's because it's releasing heat energy into the surroundings, causing the surrounding temperature to increase. So therefore it's exothermic. There are different types of combustion. The first is called complete combustion and the second is called incomplete combustion. And the type of combustion that occurs depends on whether or not there is sufficient oxygen supplied when the fuel is burned. Complete combustion occurs when there is sufficient or more than enough oxygen. A generic word equation for complete combustion would be as follows. Fuel, doesn't matter what its name is, plus oxygen goes to make carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water will always be the products of complete combustion as long as you use a hydrocarbon fuel, like methane, propane, butane. The names of these products don't change depending on which fuel you use. It's always carbon dioxide and water. For example, if methane reacted with oxygen, you'd get carbon dioxide and water. A lot of students make some weird misconception mistake in this where they say it's methane dioxide or butane dioxide being formed. No, it's just carbon dioxide that's being formed. It doesn't matter what the name of the fuel is. Here's a simple equation for it. Methane, CH4, you should by now be able to work out the formula of any alkane. Oxygen is O2, balancing number there are two in front of it. Carbon dioxide is CO2 and water is of course H2O. Now let's look at when incomplete combustion occurs. Incomplete combustion will occur if there is insufficient or not enough oxygen. For example, a fire is being choked or starved of its oxygen supply or there is a block in the pipe in an engine. So if there's not enough oxygen, you're gonna get this incomplete combustion occurring instead, for which the products are slightly different. There's two ways an incomplete combustion reaction could go. You could either react your fuel with not enough oxygen and it form carbon monoxide and water, or you could react your fuel with not enough oxygen and it will form carbon and water. Let's have a look at two examples of this. In our first example, methane reacts with insufficient oxygen to form carbon monoxide plus water. 
The equation looks like this. The only thing that's changed in terms of this versus complete combustion is we've formed carbon monoxide instead. And carbon monoxide has the formula CO and it's a gas. The alternative follows this pathway here where it forms carbon and water. In this case, we've got less oxygen being reacted and the carbon is a solid. This is why carbon being formed as a product is sometimes known as particulates of carbon because it comes off as soot. This is why some reactions give off soot as they burn because it's incomplete combustion reaction that's taking place to form carbon. Let's have a look at oxidation occurring during combustion. You should remember oxidation as either the loss of electrons or the gain of oxygen. In this case, we're only looking at oxidation in the terms of gain of oxygen. Let's apply this to a complete combustion equation. Methane will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. We're looking for elements that didn't have oxygen to start with, but then do as a product. If I look at the carbon in the fuel and then look at it in the product, I can see it's gained oxygen. It's gone from C with no oxygens to CO2, so it's gained oxygen. So carbon's been fully oxidised. Hydrogen also has no oxygen in the fuel as a reactant, but it does have oxygen as a product in the form of water. So we can say, in this particular example, both carbon and hydrogen have been fully oxidised because they've gained oxygen. Now let's have a look at incomplete combustion, the type to start with that forms carbon monoxide plus water. Again, carbon has gained oxygen, has, as has hydrogen. However, because the carbon hasn't gained the full amount of oxygens it could gain, in other words, it could gain two to form carbon dioxide, but it hasn't, we've, we can say that carbon has only been partially oxidised, but the hydrogen has been fully oxidised still. Finally, let's look at the version of incomplete combustion that forms carbon and water. In this example, you can see that even as it transforms into a product, the carbon has not gained any oxygen, so the carbon has not been oxidised, but the hydrogen has been oxidised to form water. So we can say that carbon has not been oxidised in this scenario, but hydrogen has still been fully oxidised. Now let's look at how we can easily construct a balanced symbol equation for any combustion reaction. The first example is this. Propane combusts in excess oxygen. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. Propane, you should recognise as an alkane because its name ends in ane. It's got three carbon atoms because its prefix is prop. It will follow the general formula of CnH2n plus 2 because it's an alkane, so I'll have three carbons and eight hydrogens. It's reacting with oxygen, so I'll say plus O2. I won't balance it yet though. Now, because it's reacting in excess oxygen, I know this must be complete combustion, so carbon dioxide and water must be my products, so I'll write their formulae in there and give myself some gaps to balance. Now, if we look at the products, carbon dioxide only contains one carbon, so the number of carbon dioxides you can form is governed by the number of carbons that your fuel contains. So we can say that the number of carbons in the fuel gives you the number of CO2s. This will also be the same for the number of carbon monoxides or carbons formed in incomplete combustion. So because I've got three carbons here, I'll form three carbon dioxides. Next up, we can see that water contains two hydrogens per water molecule whereas the fuel over here contains eight hydrogens. So I need to multiply the water by a number that gives me the same number of hydrogens on the left. But we could also employ a simple trick, which is just that you halve the number of hydrogens on the left and you'll get the number of waters on the right. So half of eight is four, done. Finally, if I finish by doing oxygen last, all I need to do is count the number of oxygens in total on the right hand side and halve that number to get the number of O2s on the left. I've got three times two oxygens here giving me six, and I've got four times one oxygens here giving me four. Six plus four gives me 10, and then I'm gonna halve it to give me five, because five plus O2 gives me 10 oxygens on the left. So to summarize, the number of carbons in the fuel is the number of CO2s. Halve the number of hydrogens in the fuel, you get the number of waters. And then finally, half the number of oxygens on the right is equal to the number that you put in front of O2 on the left. Let's apply this to a different example now. Butane combusts in limited oxygen to produce a gaseous product and water. Well, butane is an alkane. Bute means four carbon atoms. And because it's an alkane, it follows CnH2n plus two general formula. So we get C4H10. It's burning in oxygen. We'll balance that later. It said here it's limited oxygen. So this must be incomplete combustion, but we don't know whether it will form carbon monoxide or whether it will form particulates of carbon. 
It says here though that it will form a gaseous product, which means it's the only one that's a gas, carbon monoxide. Remember that carbon is a solid, so if it had said a solid product, we'd go to form carbon. But this is saying a gaseous product with incomplete combustion, so it must be carbon monoxide and water. Let's employ the same rules now to balance this equation. We'll get four carbon monoxides because we said that the number of carbons in the fuel gives you the number of carbon-based products. Then we've got 10 hydrogens in the fuel, so we'll get five waters over here because if we halve the number of hydrogens in the fuel, we get the number of waters. Next up, we're going to count the number of oxygens in the products and use that to balance for oxygen in the reactants. Four times one is four, five times one is five, four plus five is nine, half that is 4.5. It's absolutely fine to use half numbers when balancing equations. In our final example, we've got pentane combusting in limited oxygen to produce a solid product and water. Pentane should be recognised as an alkane, pent meaning five carbons. So therefore its formula is C5H12. Limited oxygen, again, put that there, we'll balance later. But the limitation on the oxygen means that this must be incomplete combustion. And this time, because it's saying if it forms a solid product, I know this must be carbon and not carbon monoxide, because it would say a gaseous product if it was carbon monoxide. So there's my products. Now let's balance. Five carbons in the fuel gives me five carbons in the products. Half the number of hydrogens in the fuel gives me six waters. Six times one for the oxygens on the right gives me six oxygens in total. Half of that is three. The equation is now balanced. So if you pause the video here and then come back to check your answers. A better word than burning would be combustion. Two different types of combustion would be complete combustion occurring when there is sufficient or enough oxygen or excess meaning more than enough and incomplete combustion occurring when there is insufficient oxygen. A generic word equation for complete combustion is fuel plus oxygen goes to make carbon dioxide plus water because that's complete combustion, the only one that forms carbon dioxide. Remember that complete combustion is the more common type of combustion that you'll be assessed on and the type of combustion that we want to take place. The two generic word equations for incomplete combustion, however, are fuel plus insufficient oxygen goes to make carbon monoxide plus water or if there's even less oxygen, fuel plus insufficient oxygen goes to make carbon plus water. Remember that carbon monoxide is a gaseous product, whereas carbon is a solid product, often known as particulates of carbon or soot. During complete combustion, which elements are oxidised and be descriptive? Both carbon and hydrogen from the fuel are fully oxidised during complete combustion. Here's your next set of questions. Please pause the video here and then come back to check your answers. A balanced symbol equation for the complete combustion of ethane to begin with. So ethane, you should have got C2H6. It's reacting with oxygen to form CO2 plus H2O because this is complete combustion. Now we've got to balance it. Two carbons in the fuel gives me two CO2s. Six hydrogens in the fuel gives me three H2Os. And then finally, to balance, I needed 3.5O2. A half number is fine. Next up, we've got to write a balanced symbol equation for the complete combustion of hexane. So hex means six carbons. So abiding by CNH2N plus two, we should have got C6H14. Now, let's try and work out the balancing numbers for this. Six carbons in the fuel gives me six CO2. 14 hydrogens in the fuel gives me seven H2O. And then finally, six twos gives me 12 and seven ones gives me seven. So I've got 19 oxygens in the products. Uh, therefore, I need 9.502s to get 19 on the left as well. A balanced symbol equation now for the incomplete combustion of propane to form a gaseous product in water. So because this is incomplete combustion, I need to decide between carbon monoxide or carbon as the product there alongside water. But because it says it's forming a gaseous product, it must be carbon monoxide. So I'm going to start off the equation like this, C3H8 being the propane there. Now let's balance it. Three carbons in the fuel gives me three carbon monoxides. Eight hydrogens in the fuel gives me four H2O. And then if I balance, I should get three oxygens here. What can we say about the oxidation of carbon in this example? Well, the carbon in carbon monoxide has only been partially oxidised. It's not been fully oxidised. If it was fully oxidised, it would be CO2. And if it had not been oxidised at all, it would just be carbon. So we can say carbon has only been partially oxidised. Next up, we've got a right and balanced symbol equation for the combustion of methane in a limited oxygen to form a solid and water. So, because this is incomplete combustion, we know that because it's limited oxygen, and it's forming a solid, it must be forming carbon. 
So we should have got this baseline here for the equation. Now I needed to balance it. Now I had one carbon in the fuel, in the fuel, so I'll only form one carbon as that particulates of carbon product. I had four hydrogens in the fuel, so I'll form two H2O. Now if I count the total number of oxygens on the right hand side, there's only two, so I need one O2, so I don't need to put a number in front of it. The oxidation of carbon in this example, well it contains no oxygen, so carbon has not been oxidized. Now let's look at how we can test for a product of combustion. The main product for combustion that we want to be able to test for is carbon dioxide. And there's a test that we can carry out to identify carbon dioxide. The test for carbon dioxide is called lime water. Lime water, you've got to remember that one. All you need to do is bubble your gas through the lime water. And if carbon dioxide has been detected, then the lime water will change from colourless to cloudy. We need to give that full change in our explanation colourless to cloudy. That is the positive result of detecting carbon dioxide when using lime water to test for it. Now let's look at some issues associated with the combustion products. Carbon dioxide, you should know, is a greenhouse gas which causes global warming. There are lots of issues associated with global warming, such as rising sea levels due to the polar ice caps melting due to a rising global average temperature. The rising sea levels can also cause coastal erosion, loss of and destruction of habitats, and increased storm frequency due to an increased temperature in the atmosphere, causing there to be more steam in the air, essentially, which causes storms to get really bad. So global warming is a key issue that's associated with carbon dioxide. During incomplete combustion, there were two different ways it could go. It could either form carbon monoxide or carbon. Let's explore the issues with carbon monoxide to begin with. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. That's our primary issue. So this is why when boilers fail on central heating systems, that's typically because they're undergoing incomplete combustion inside the boiler, which produces carbon monoxide. That carbon monoxide irreversibly bonds to the haemoglobin inside your red blood cells, meaning that your red blood cells can't carry oxygen. This first causes carbon monoxide poisoning, which makes you feel really dizzy and tired. However, eventually it will kill you. So, carbon monoxide is dangerous because it's poisonous. The problem with carbon monoxide, though, is it's very difficult to detect because it's both colourless, in that you can't really see it against the background of the air, and it's odourless, so you can't smell it even if it's being released. This is why it's important to regularly have your boiler serviced. Next up, we've got carbon being formed as a potential product of incomplete combustion. And you may have heard me throughout the video referring this to particulates of carbon or soot. If you ever remember images of historic London during the Victorian era or the Industrial Revolution, you'll know that London suffered heavily from smog. This is because its factories were pumping out lots of particulates of carbon due to poor combustion efficiency resulting in limited oxygen being supplied and incomplete combustion taking place. This released particulates of carbon, which we often call soot, and that causes global dimming. Global dimming is just a fancy term for smog. Smog can cause all sorts of issues, particularly though respiratory problems in humans and animals. To finish up, I'd like you to pause the video here, attempt these questions, and then see how you did. The type of combustion that produces carbon monoxide is incomplete combustion, and it will occur when there is insufficient oxygen. The major issue with carbon monoxide is that it's poisonous, and the issue is difficult to overcome because it's difficult to detect due to it being colourless and odourless. The environmental issue caused by carbon dioxide is global warming. A test for carbon dioxide is to bubble the gas through lime water, and in doing so, the lime water will change from colourless to cloudy if carbon dioxide is detected. The type of combustion that produces carbon dioxide is complete combustion, and this will occur when there is sufficient oxygen. Describe a scenario where burning a fuel would cause smog, and give the scientific name for smog. If a fuel is burned in insufficient oxygen, it can produce carbon particulates as a product due to the incomplete combustion taking place. The carbon particulates will cause global dimming. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found the content accessible and interesting. If you're a combined science student, you've now finished unit seven of organic chemistry. Uh, whereas if you're a triple science student, there are a few more lessons to go um, continuing in further depth into this unit. So don't watch any more videos after lesson four on chemistry if you're a combined science student, but do continue to watch if you're triple. Thanks very much for watching.